Brunel didn't have a formal training, so he learnt the trade by going out onto construction sites. And he did it from very, very young. He started working when he was 16. One of Mark Brunel's early projects, which Isambard got involved with, was the Thames Tunnel. Everybody thought it couldn't be done, it was very, very risky. The chief engineer had to retire on the grounds of ill health <laughs> caused by the construction, and Brunel was, was asked to take over by his dad. He worked right alongside the people digging the hole, and he got involved in an awful lot of their disasters. When they were going through the clay, it was all right. When they got close to the bed of the river, the, the river had a tendency to come in through the roof, and Brunel was quite often caught in the front, and he, in fact, he nearly died more than once, but there's a famous occasion where the whole of the tunnel flooded. He waited. He just stood there, just um, sort of transfixed by this thing. At the very last minute, he ran out as the water was coming up, and he got hit on the head by a piece of wood and knocked unconscious and was dragged out by one of his mates just in the nick of time. There's no question that he got an understanding of the physicality of what he was doing. The water was terrifying, and the earth and the clay was wet and cold and heavy. His most famous project is the Clifton Suspension Bridge which wasn't really one of his projects at all. It was built after he died. He did do some sketches for it when he was very young, again in his mid-twenties. The best thing about the Clifton Bridge was that even though he was very young, he entered the competition with a sketch designed for a bridge that was much bigger than any bridge that had ever been built ever before. And the jury said, over our dead bodies, you know, it's not going to happen. And so he didn't agree with that. He went to see the chairman of the jury. He basically talked him round and said, right, you put me second, but actually you should really pick me first. And they did. They were persuaded. The other one that people know very well, even though they may not realise it's Brunel, is the Great West Railway, which is still being used today. He and Robert Stevenson were alive together, and they were the principal movers in the procreation of the railways in this, in this country. I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles of railways built under their direction. He surveyed the route from London to Bristol himself, and that route was a pioneering route, and it's good enough that it's hardly been changed in the last 150 years. So then all the, the railways and the tunnels and the cuttings and the stations and everything else were built under his direction. He didn't stop with the Great West Railway. He had the idea of continuing the railway out into the sea, off to America and started designing ships. The Great Britain, Great Eastern, Great Western. The Great Eastern was the biggest and it was the, and the last one and it, it, it did virtually kill him. So he, he went from a world where moving 10 or 20 miles was quite a big deal to somewhere where he thought actually the natural thing to be able to do is to move all the way from London to New York in one seamless transportation experience and he would be responsible for designing it, building it and operating it. You know, it's quite a big <laughs> ego probably. Well, one of my favourite bridges is the Saltash. It goes across the river in between Devon and Cornwall. It looks like a couple of big lenses all braced up with sort of this light bracing and it's designed to take his own railway across the water into Cornwall. The whole story of it is geared around pushing the envelope a long, long way. I mean, it was a form that had never been built before, and actually it's never been built since, which makes you think it was a slight dead end in evolutionary terms, but nevertheless, it's beautiful to look at. They built these things on the bank, great long spans, and then they floated them out into the water, and Brunel had a special platform made on the piece of bridge, and they floated this bridge out with Brunel on it. He choreographed the whole thing, conducted it like a conductor with him waving semaphore flags. And at the end of it, when they managed to get it into position, which was in total silence, but with a huge crowd of thousands of people, he pointed his semaphore at them. And the band started up with a song called, I think, um, Hail the Conquering Hero Comes, which was obviously about made, <laughs> chosen by Brunel about himself. It's probably specially commissioned. <laughs> I like him because he was a human being first, and an engineer second. <laughs>